Houston 31, Memphis 13. This so so Memphis. I said before the season, I don't think they've got the playmakers. I don't think they got the guys in the trenches. And this was just another example of that. Houston's defense is pretty good. Held Memphis to only 4.4 yards per play. Only 106 yards rushing in this game. Both teams had two turnovers. But overall, I mean, this was just a beating. Seth Hennigan, 21 out of 45 passing. 208 yards, one touchdown, two picks. I, I, I don't know what to make of... Memphis, uh, I will say this. Chris on the show has mentioned multiple times that he, and these are his words, not mine, that he would push Ryan Silverfield out of a window if he could get Justin Fuente to come back to Memphis. I don't know what to make of that, but I do know that uh, I think Houston's really good, and I think Memphis is kind of falling off a bit without the Mike Norvell genius that is here. And I don't know that Fuente would have continued the same trajectory that he was at Memphis before he took the Virginia Tech job. So I I don't know what to make of Memphis at this point in the season. Obviously, they have one more game to go against Tulane, and they need that one to get bowl eligible. But Houston looks really good, man. Like it, this, they, They've only beaten two winning teams. We did have somebody jump into the chat earlier that said they've only beaten like ECU and SMU. Oh, Brown Yeti jumped in. Yeah, but Houston has played like two teams over 500, ECU and SMU, and I think that's it. They lost to Texas Tech early. I, can Houston give Cincinnati a game? I think they can. They're definitely playing as well right now as, as anybody. And, I mean, again, it's not their, like, I don't, I mean, the, the thing about only beating two teams that are over 500 or whatever, I mean, Rice, Grambling, Navy, Tulsa, Tulane, ECU, SMU, USF, Temple, Memphis, like, that's not their fault that every team on their schedule is bad. There's nothing they can do about that. I will say that Texas Tech loss, man, so super weird. The thing for Memphis is we just saw like Seth Hennigan's a freshman. That's a big deal. And I will say to Chris on the record, thanks for telling me about it because now if he pushes Ryan Searlfield out of a window, I'm an accessory and I have to testify against him. <laughs> Drag me into this whole thing. Just trying to watch football, Chris. But yeah, so I mean, Clayton Toon is is the, the most boring quarterback. Uh, he just makes it happen. But I mean, the, the, you know, Houston is is sneakily stacked with Dell and Singleton at, at receiving there. I really think that they can match up well. And I think the difference between them and SMU, because SMU's offense, for instance, is better than Houston's offense. The difference is SMU's defense is a mess, and Houston's defense is sneaky real good. Uh, has just been absolutely frustrating to people. And so I, I think that this, I mean, again, Cincinnati, I said it a couple of weeks ago, Cincinnati has a real tough stretch here with you know, SMU theoretically, ECU has been sneakily decent, and then Houston all back to back is going to be pretty rough. But but I I don't know that Houston can beat them. I just think that Houston is um, going to give them as much of a test as they've seen all season. I mean, they look great, and it looks like Holgerson knows what he's doing and kind of has it running here. That's that that is they're they're, they're trending hot at a really really nice time. Oh yeah. If they go and you know take care of business next week against UConn, of course, and then they they put up a good fight against Cincinnati, if not pull an upset. I, they could sneak into this New Year's Six, but I think UTSA is ahead of them. But if they beat Cincinnati, so I think they, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think they get an SEC team in the uh, in a bowl game though for sure. If they uh, and maybe beat them, so yeah, no, they are. I will tell you this: the matchup from the offense definitely plays into what Cincinnati has had trouble with. They can run the football yeah. like Houston can actually run the football, and you know Clayton Tune is. Not a bad quarterback. In this game, he had two picks. He had one touchdown, 20 out of 34, 264 yards. Like He wasn't great, but he can throw it well enough to offset uh, the rushing attack. If you, There are ways to get Cincinnati to bite on things, and I think that they can take advantage of it. The question will be, can they slow down Cincinnati's offense? I'm uh, I'm real curious about it. I don't think Holgerson goes anywhere after this season. Uh, I think he, he will be at Houston for a long, long while, but I am... I'm very curious about uh, Doug Belk, the uh, defensive coordinator, and what he's done with Houston's defense this year. Uh, he'll he'll be getting some calls. I would almost guarantee. Yeah. He's saving tree, all that kind of stuff. Like this will uh, this will be interesting to see what happens after the season is over. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.